Hey guys, many people wanted to know how we can create a thumbnail in Affinity. And here I am. In this video, we will learn how to make a thumbnail and add some color effects that make your photos pop. <laughs> and guys, believe me, it's very easy. Just follow my steps and you will understand the concept. Don't worry if you're a total beginner, we're learning this together. So let's start. Here I am taking the size of the thumbnail. I already have the preset, which is 1280 by 720 and 300 dpi. You can take 150 dpi as well. Let's create the document. First, we will create our background. Go to the Shape tool, select Rectangle. Create a rectangle by dragging and choose a color. I have written the hex code so you can use the same color in your document. Lock your background so that it doesn't disturb us further. Now, add your images. I have added all the images in the description so you can practice. Let me just place the images. Here is the trophy image. Let me just place it too. This is the placement. I am renaming the layers so you can understand everything well. Our first effect is black and white. To apply it, select your image, go to Pixel, New Adjustment Layer, Black and White. If you're new, this is where all your adjustment layers live. Here are some values. You can adjust them according to your image. Each slider adjusts how bright or dark each color range becomes after converting the image to black and white. You will notice that it applied on the whole elements. This is because adjustment layers, by default, affect the entire document since they sit at the top of the layer stack. We will make a clipping mask of our effect layer by dragging and dropping it onto image 1. Now it will affect only image 1. We will create a mask on the jersey because we don't want it black and white. Select Image 1, go to the Select tool, select Selection Brush tool, and create a selection of the jersey. Select your black and white adjustment layer and click on the Mask button. Right-click on the mask and invert it. In a mask, black means hide and white means visible. Whatever we have done with Ronaldo's image, we will do the same with Mbappe. I'm just speeding up the process so that you don't get bored. You can increase the brush size by using square bracket keys and double. Please don't forget to select your layer. You can select the mask and fill the color. Rename the third image. We will add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer on it and drop it onto the trophy. Now we will add glow on it. Here is the FX option. Click on it. Choose outer glow. Add glow using the same color the trophy has. Now it's starting to look amazing already. After this, let's work on the characters. Select Ronaldo's image, add a color balance adjustment layer to add a little bluish color on it. Go to Pixel, New Adjustment Layer, Color Balance. Whenever we use it for the first time, this is where you'll find it. You can copy my exact values from the screen. Select your adjustment layer. We can create a black mask, which means we will use the white brush to show the color only on his face. While adding your mask, click Alt. This will create a black mask, which means we can use a white paintbrush to reveal the color on his face.
Now we will be using the same color balance adjustment layer on Mbappe's image. Now we will be adding a hue saturation adjustment layer to make the jersey's colors pop. Drag this adjustment layer above the black and white adjustment layer so it will only apply to the layer mask. Same for Mbappe. We have created our basic layout. After this, let's add a clarity adjustment layer so our images will look more sharpened and clear. To add this, select your image, go to Pixel, Live Filters, Sharpen, Clarity. Now it's looking cleaner and sharper. Trust the process. It is looking good. Let's create the golden highlight effect on his skin so that it looks like the trophy is actually glowing. For creating this, select your image, go to Pixel Adjustment Layers, Recolor. Use this value and create a golden color similar to the trophy's color. Add a mask on this layer. Use a soft white brush to add the highlights. Copy the same adjustment layer to Mbappe's image and do the same. Add Unsharp Mask Adjustment Layer to make it more sharp. Before adding any text matter, we will create margins around our artboard so that it looks balanced. To create the margins, go to View, Guides. Here, you can add margins around 40 to 42 pixels. Press T to enable the text tool. And now you can write your text. I'm writing 2026. It's up to you what you want to write. I am using the Ghost Factory font. Align it according to your artboard. I am adding glitch effect on my text. You can add whatever effect you like, but for that, you will have to explore all the effects. Select your text layer, go to Pixel Live Filters, Distort, Glitch. Use method Waves. Increase the strength and the number of channels to two. Now, let's spice this up a bit. Add a black dusty texture overlay. Drop the opacity to around 80 to 90%. And change the blend mode to subtract. After this step, you'll instantly see the results come alive. Trust me, this part is super satisfying and actually motivates you because your design starts looking fire. Use the little settings icon next to the blend mode options. Here, you can adjust the graph to blend the texture perfectly according to your image. I am pasting the images of barbed wire. I will provide all the images in my description so you can download them and practice. Add the second barbed wire image above the text. Now you can clearly see the before and after. And after using the texture overlay, 
the whole look becomes more aesthetic and polished. I'm adding halftone PNGs. It's totally your choice which color you want to use in your design, but I'd recommend sticking to the colors already present in your artwork. Blue, red, or even green will look good. I would personally suggest avoiding golden, because we want the viewer's eye to first land on the trophy. Adding golden elements might pull attention away from it, and we don't want that. This is our next paper texture overlay. Hold shift to rotate it. This way it snaps perfectly at certain angles. Use screen blend mode for this texture. Adjust the graph to get the exact look you want. Add a mask on this layer and clean up the faces. Now let's add our last grainy texture overlay. Change its blend mode to color dodge. As you can see, all these overlays make the poster look way more professional. It no longer looks basic or immature. It now feels like a proper, polished design. Here, I feel the bluish colors are a bit too strong on the faces. To fix that, select the adjustment layer and simply reduce its opacity. Don't worry, these tiny tweaks always make things look better. Now, select all the layers and press Ctrl plus G to group them. Any adjustment layer you add now will apply to the entire design inside the group. Create a clarity layer to sharpen the whole design. Adjust it based on what looks best. Now add the depth of field effect. Go to Pixel, Live Filters, Blur, Depth of Field. Use Tilt Shift mode. Adjust the position and blur it to get that nice depth effect. Finally, add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer over the entire design to make it pop. At this point, your design is complete. It's honestly so easy to make and understand. If you're familiar with Photoshop, using Affinity will feel super comfortable. And if you're new to Affinity, don't worry, you can always watch my videos. Also, don't forget to save your document. I haven't saved mine, don't repeat my mistake. To export your final design, make sure no layer is selected. Go to Export, PNG, then choose your format. I'm selecting JPEG with best quality, and make sure it says Document. If you've accidentally selected a layer, it will show something else. Then just hit export. And that's it, man. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you understood everything and learned something new.